Thank you very, very much, uh, much for coming. Um, I guess my first question was, you know, I mentioned there, it's, it's been 16 years since you started Hey. Um, could you tell us just a little bit about how the, I guess, the studio came about? Like, what were you doing before that, and what gave you the impetus to start your own studio? Yeah, um, I finished uh, uni in, in 2001 or two, yeah. And a long time ago, <laughs> and yes, and, and after my studies, I studied graphic design in Barcelona. I was working in different studios, like seven years, yeah. And then I wanted to do my own style, like create my own things, everything my own way. <laughs> and of course, I needed to stop working because working with other people or the studios, I couldn't make it happen. So that's the reason I found my my studio, and this is what I was working before. I mean, were you a bit frustrated by having to do things to a, I don't know, to a different kind of style that you wanted to do? No, because I was learning. I mean, I knew that I have like a style because when I was at the uh, university and also working in different places, I realized it, but of course I couldn't like manifest it. I mean, we're going to come on to style because I think it's a really interesting question. And obviously, Hay has a, a very unique style and um, an aesthetic. But I guess just to come go back to that time, I mean, we're talking about 2007. Yes. So the following year was uh, was the financial crisis. <laughs> what was it? What was it like? I guess being a, a very very young studio back then. Um, yeah, in 2007, 2008. What were those first couple of years like? Yeah, for me, of course, I didn't know about that <laughs> at the beginning. But because I was working alone, I was at my home uh, the first years, like the first five years. And yes, I was alone. And for me, it was an advantage because at that time in Spain was very, very hard, the crisis. Families, friends, they, they stopped working from one day to another. It was very fast. And then and suddenly I, I came up with my studio, but very small, only a few projects, and, and I visit um, companies in Barcelona, editorial museums, and I said, hello, this is my portfolio. And they say, okay, let's try it. Because I was young and, of course, more affordable be comparing with other studios. Okay, interesting. Um, by the way, we're going to be seeing lots of your, your work um, behind us on the screen. Um, yeah. yeah, just for everyone who, who wants to know, that's, that's all of Hey Studio's work. I mean, not all of it. There's, there's a lot <laughs> over the last 16 years, but that's a kind of a, a selection of it. Um, I guess in those, those first early years, like what were some of your coping me mechanisms? Like how did you manage when times were a bit tough and when you know, the projects were difficult to come by? Because I guess, I mean, some people are gonna be going through something similar now, I would yeah. expect. It, it, you know, we're in a kind of a difficult climate at the moment as well. So what were some of your ways of managing back then? Yeah, I work a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was at my home and I did like long hours working. Uh, now I have a daughter and now it was impossible to make it, but before I didn't have. So yes, I think work a lot, and I send a lot of portfolios, but not just sending an email, you know. I call a lot of places, and I try to contact the right person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I did a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was a spam, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sometimes have to spam. Yes. You just have to yeah, bom bombard people. I think that's right. Um, and I guess, yeah, today, as I mentioned, Hay is kind of one of the, the most yeah, respected branding and design studios in, in, in Spain, but also, I guess, on the continent as well. Um, you've grown it into this amazing business, but I'm kind of interested to hear, like, from your perspective, what have been some of the biggest challenges over those 16 years? I mean, you've probably seen, you know, financial crisis and then another, but, um, yeah, what have been some of the biggest kind of tricky things and difficulties mm. that you've had to overcome? Yeah, 16 years is a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yes, for me, of course, the first years was like was setting up the studio. I had a lot, a lot of energy at the beginning. And then through the years, sometimes I lost it because of personal things, of course. And yes, but for me, the most difficult part, like to create a studio, because a studio means people, right? Not just me. If not, it's a freelance. A studio means people and people managing people, managing egos, and that was the most, and is still the most difficult part. Because for me, graphic design or crea creativity is easy. I have a lot of ideas, <laughs> plenty of ideas. But managing people and how to make my team happy, working all together, this is difficult. It's not easy. 
I mean, that's, that's, I, I reckon if you spoke to like 90% of people who run, you know, creative businesses, but kind of probably any, any business, they'd say, yeah, yeah, managing people, getting everyone pulling in the same direction is like one of the, one of the biggest, biggest challenges, right? Yeah, and, and, and I think because creativity is uh, something that comes from the heart, so it's delicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, working with people. Um, also with myself, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I, um, I remember five years ago, I had a personal transition, and, and yes, and I tried to, to learn from that, and that's okay, if I don't know how to make it, so I always say, ask for help, so I ask for help, and, and, and I ask a coaching, uh, someone that helps me, and also helps the team. And it's very important. That's good. So you had someone to come in and kind yes. of mediate. And, yes. Yeah. That's really interesting. I mean, I guess, I mean, one thing that um, you touched on there, which I'd love to come back to, is just that thing of, you know, because it's creative work, actually, people's ideas are very close to their heart because it's like almost an expression of their own personality. So it's difficult to kind of criticize creative work sometimes because of that, right? Yeah, I think it's important to know that I'm someone, it's not criti crit I'm sorry, it's it difficult for me to say this word <laughs> in English. <laughs> Uh, it's not about your person, never. It's about the work. So if you can separate this from your person and work, you are free to do whatever you want. You are free, you are free your mind. But if you can separate this, you are fucked. <laughs> yes, I mean, go to therapy and a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and, and I realize it like, I don't know, seven years ago, six. And when I did it, okay, I'm free, I'm happy. <laughs> um, you talked about kind of, I guess, studio culture maybe is, is how you describe it, that kind of thing of having everyone pulling in, in the right direction or the same direction at least. Um, you in the pandemic, I think, well, since the pandemic, lots of studios have kind of gone to remote working or kind of semi-remote, maybe like a hybrid model. You believe quite strongly that we should be in the same space if we're working on the same projects and things. Could you just tell us a little bit about why, why you feel that way? I mean, you seem to have quite strong views about this. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were in, in Spain in, in the studio. We were like two, almost three months. And then I asked my, my team, what do you want to do? <laughs> They say, I want, everybody wanted to come back, everybody. And I said, okay, and, but I, I want a day <laughs> at, my, at my home, please. <laughs> and I said, okay, so let's do one day uh, working from home. Uh, because everybody wanted to, to be with people and talk. And I think in, in, in creativity, it's very important, like talk and share ideas. And share ideas for the moment, how the technology is, is not very easy. So maybe in the future, if I can see yourself like real, okay, it's possible. But now, for me, it's not enough. I mean, maybe we need, all need to have those like Apple headsets and then, then Yeah, it might be, if yeah. everybody has the Apple and, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's all right. This isn't a branded show for Apple, by the way. Just, uh, <laughs> just uh, that's the second time it's come up. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I guess as well, you know, when you're talking about things in person, there's a, there's a way of... I mean, you, you've talked about this in the past, I think, as well, that younger team members or yes. junior team members need to learn from yes. kind of seniors. Is, is that something that you felt? Yes, I, um, I've talked a lot with this, with other studios and people that run studios. And they said, okay, the first person that are always in the studio, people that maybe are uh, working from home, always are the juniors, always. So let me think about that because it's okay, they need... Uh, guidance, of course, because maybe a senior or someone that has a lot of experience, they don't want anything to hear, you know. <laughs> okay, and young people, they need, um, they need to learn everything. And I'm there to say, okay, this is a ligature, this is a track, this is a space. How you say it in a Zoom, you know, like try it and print it and make it bigger and smaller and wow, it's quite difficult for me and and also, I know it's, you need to make an effort, but it's, I think it's very necessary. I mean, it's very interesting how yeah, so many studios have gone different ways, right? Some are fully remote and kind of swear by it and say that it's brilliant. Some are kind of fully, you're, you're I guess, more towards the, everyone in the studio. But you do have your Wednesdays at, at home. Um, yeah, <laughs> same day. <laughs> yeah. um, 
I guess I'm also curious to hear about your thoughts on work-life balance, because it's something that you just mentioned there, that in the first five years of your studio, you were working all the time, which mm. is probably not the kind of thing that we would recommend, but sometimes I guess it is important or it's necessary. Um, yeah. How have you managed to, to kind of, I guess, unlearn that? Because I remember you saying once that you were um, the kind of person who responded to emails at 1 a.m. Like, how have you managed to <laughs> unlearn that behavior or, like, change what you do? Yeah, I think that when you have a company, you, ne you never switch off. Never. <laughs> and, but I, I was thinking about before, and, okay, I never switch off. Maybe I'm on pause, 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 you know? And it's there, and sometimes, so, but I'm always there. Always. Mm. It's difficult when, when, when you run a, a company. And in my case, it's a small company, so I take care of almost everything. So <laughs> I don't have, like, I don't know, people that make this. So, so yeah. I, I think it's very difficult in my case to disconnect. But do you, I mean, do you manage to do it ever? Are you ever kind of... Thanks to, thera the... thanks to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> this is an advert for therapy, so, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> we need a partner of this, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, th thanks to, to, to learn from... You know, yeah, but this is true. I mean, it's not a joke, really. Um, yeah, I think it's important to know the balance and when it's necessary to work a lot and when it's not, and disconnect and, and learn how to disconnect. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess when you have like a, a team behind you, you can kind of, sometimes you can, yeah, kind of disconnect a little bit and, and hope yeah. Things and I say, okay, never is so important, you know. Maybe you think it's important, and then you ask the client, it's it, can I you delay it two days? Of course. Yeah, yeah right. you know, okay. So <laughs> ask this, it's not as important. <laughs> I'd love to, I mean, I want to come on to, to talk about some, some projects and, and some of Hayes' work, but um, I guess one thing that I, again, just from a kind of, you know, if, if people here are, I imagine lots of people working for smaller independent studios or, or lead teams or kind of have ambitions one day to set up their own company, when it comes to kind of keeping your team inspired and, and creatively fulfilled, I guess, um, how do you do that? I mean, you know, we, we've all been there when it's stressful and busy, like how do you keep your team kind of inspired with, uh, mm. yeah, what's going on? I think it's a teamwork. It's not just me. I mean, it's um, at the studio, everybody has a voice, and if someone wants to propose something. But for me, the people that I hire need to be curious and has curiosity always. Because I'm not, I have curiosity, but not for everybody, you know? So I need people that <laughs> help me in that case. So, yes. Uh, Colette, she, she, for example, she is the project manager and she is also a swing dance, dancer, so she is super optimistic all the time and proposes a lot of things. I think it's important that to be around people that has the same um, spirit as you, or maybe the things that you don't have. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a bit of a complimentary. Yeah, um, because sometimes yeah. I'm quite like lazy or so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't believe it. Don't Colette believe is it. like, well, okay, let's do this. And okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get everyone up and do some <laughs> dancing. Um, I mean, I'd love to, to, again, yeah, I do want to come on to the work. And maybe one more question, because, again, I feel like this is something that lots of people are going to want to hear your thoughts on. How you deal with clients, because... You know, I'm sure we all have clients out there. We want to know as many tips as possible on how to, how to deal with them. How do you maintain your kind of your point of view or your creative vision, I guess, um, even when it's kind of in the face of pressure from a client? Like, if you really believe in your idea, how do you kind of fight for it, I guess? Well, I think it's uh, important to uh, talk with teams, uh, Timmy, right? Yeah. Or team, sorry. Um, uh, conference because uh, it's about explaining a, st a story mm -hmm. um, very well done. <laughs> and this is so something that maybe designers, not, we are not very good on that. <laughs> okay, this is my idea. And we think that everybody understands that. And no, it's not that true. So yeah, I think it's very important to explain it very, very well. Mm -hmm. And like a, like a film, right. exactly. And this is my, I think it's very important, like why you just read, explain it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It could be real or not. I mean, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you need to find something that is science because design is not science. Mm -hmm. So you need to 
to, okay, let's do this, 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 and the client can say no. And this is something important to work on. Yeah, and I guess, yeah, when they say no very directly, that's maybe where you have to slightly draw the line under the fight, <laughs> <laughs> potentially. Um, I mean, yeah, we're all going to be, I think, talking about the three Ts from, from Timmy's talk, for sure. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about some of the work. I guess um, something that really stood out to me on your website, and it's something that you actually mentioned earlier when you were saying you had really like, strong ideas about what you wanted to work on when you were working for some other studios very early on in your career. But on your website, you say that shapes quickly come to mind when we hear about something exciting. Um, I'm really interested by that. Is that the kind of brain that you have? Does your brain just kind of immediately start generating shapes and colors as soon as you kind of almost hear a, a client brief? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, yes. yeah. I'm the one, I'm not looking the camera, you know? Yeah, yeah, and Colette is made up. Okay. Yes, yes, I have a lot of ideas. The problem is that I don't have money to make it happen, you know? <laughs> no, it's true. For example, the podcast, of course, I would love to do like more things and like create like other stuff that it's not just a podcast. So create a community. So, of course, I need supporters and that. But ideas I have so a lot, yeah. I mean, to, coming on to the podcast, where did the podcast come from? I mean, like, what was the, what was the idea behind it? Because, yeah, Women at Work is a great idea for a podcast. Yeah. Um, it came because I felt very um, lonely uh, as a this woman in design. Um, my references when I was studying, I think, were like a few, or maybe just one, Paula Scher, Irma Boom, so maybe two, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yes, and um, I'm happy that now it's not like that, but yes, uh, and also I went to conferences and a lot of places I was the only woman having a studio, mm -hmm. people, I mean, like, and yes, and I felt very, very lonely, and I think, okay, we need to, to give voice to, to a woman that has the same spirit or maybe, like, make it happen. And because when you have references, reference, uh, you have the energy to make it happen. And this is very important. At the end, is the podcast is, is a, as, um, a place that we give voice to creative people. And, and Anne Guerra, she is the host. I'm not the host. Um, but yes, I'm part of the team, of course. And, and, and I, th I think it's supporting women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like the situation has improved or is improving, or do you think it's still as, as bad as Of course as ever? it's improving, yeah. yes. We all have more reference. Um, but in w talking in, with design studios, branding, not so much. <laughs> I remember yeah. reading somewhere, I think it was 1% of, of studios are, are women-led, which just is, yeah, completely yeah. shocking. Yeah. I don't know why, but I think it's part of the history, you know? Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's definitely a kind of structural, yeah. uh, structural problem. Yeah. Um, coming back to the projects, I guess one thing that strikes me about, about your work is the breadth of projects that, that you work on. Um, you know, it's digital and physical. It's kind of projects that involve a lot of handmade craft. I'm thinking about the identity that you did for Arils, the, the um, I'm maybe saying that wrong. Yeah. Yes, exactly, for, for the uh, shoe brand. And some that are kind of much more futuristic and, and kind of digital. Um, I mean, is there ever a time when you feel nervous about a route that you're proposing or that, that it's going in a different direction? Or are you always confident that you can do any kind of project, no matter what kind of outcome you're, mm. you're working towards? Yeah, I like the take risk. Mm. And, and I, if it's something I don't know how to make it, I ask and I try to find someone that helps. Uh, yes, I like it. I like, like new techniques a lot, <laughs> so yes. I like to discover, and I have this curiosity. It's part of my attitude. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about the kind of breadth of projects. I think what's also really interesting about Hayes' work is it's kind of possible to tell when a project is one of yours somehow. I don't know what it is. It's whether, whether it's the color or the vibrancy or something about it. But you can kind of tell, yeah, in the colors and the, and the shapes that it's a, a Hay a hey project. In a way, it's kind of you're not one of those invisible design studios in that in that sense. Is that something that you're kind of aware on aware of when you're working on a project? Are you conscious that something needs to fit your aesthetic, or is it just something that happens kind of purely coincidentally that it's your taste and it's your style and that that ends up in the project? Yeah, it's my my style. <laughs> um, but it's not just I'm, I mean my style is like. 
uh, being simple, like with the minimum elements, make it something big. And it could be in typeface, color, whatever. And yes, um, color for me, it's very natural. When I was a kid, every, I mean, it's part of, of me as well. Mm -hmm. So people that work with me also, it's important that they like this, because if not, it's, some, it's a designer that only designs in black and white. It's difficult, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. And I guess clients also, it's slightly self-selecting, like clients will come to you because they know that that's what they might get back, right? They, they want something a bit more colorful. Like if someone was wanting a black and white identity, it yeah, would sometimes. be Yeah, sometimes. We have a client that, okay, but you don't have like black and, okay. <laughs> I mean, I can make it. I mean, we have some, but of course this is not the style, but it's, um, I'm adapting to you as well. I mean, it's not necessary to be always like this, but this is, how I express uh, all the um, adjectives and attitudes that um, for brands. So of course, brands need to to have these um, elements in their um, values or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, it feels like uh, you know, I, I, whenever I speak to people who are running studios or creatives and designers at the moment, it feels like there's a bit of an elephant in the room, which I'd like to address, which is AI. Of course, I can slightly hear the collective groan in the room when I, when I mentioned that. But I think it is important that we, we talk about it because you have some quite strong views about AI and I guess the role it's going to play in the future of the creative industry and the design industry. Um, yeah. Can you just share where you stand when it comes to AI and what, what you expect the future to look like? We are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, do you want to uh, elaborate on that a little bit? No, I mean, no, seriously, I'm sorry. do, 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 I'm do sorry. you really think that that's, that's yes, the case? I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. But I think, I, I'm sorry, it's something that we talk a lot in the studio, and I try to be positive. I try it because there is a, a very young designer, and when she listened to me, she got depressed. So, okay, let's try, okay. Um, I was like, I, I'm using Midjourney a lot because I want to learn it and to how this tool can help me. And now it helps me a lot, okay? It's, um, for me, it's like, wow, wow, it's my, it, I'm, I'm obsessed, okay. you know? But it helps me to realize ideas. It's one, it's a tool, and for me, it's just a tool, okay? I, because I have the knowledge, I have experience. So, but some, somebody that, doesn't have the, his, the, the knowledge and the studies, it's, uh, wow, it's very, I don't know how to say it in English, it's veneno. Um, I don't know. It's a poison, yeah. Okay. Or, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, but for me, all techniques, I love all techniques. And for me, this is another one, you know? And I think it's important to know that and learn it because uh, to know what is, happen, what is going to happen in the future. So maybe in my next project, I don't know, it's to create a haze prompt. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that it's possible. So you, you input all of your work into uh, an AI? It's going to happen. Somebody is going to make it. So it's better to make it by myself. Right. <laughs> and do you, do you ever foresee it, I mean, being able to do exactly what you do? Because it sounds like what you're saying is that you're using it as a tool because you still need a lot of the experience and the knowledge that you have from a career in design. Yeah. Do you think it'll ever be able to do everything that you do, or do you think it'll always still just be a tool that we use alongside all of our human faculties? I'm cross I crossing my fingers and toes here, though. I don't know, because it's going very fast, but for what I'm doing now, it's, um, I'm the creative director, you know? I choose this, this, I'm, I'm very fast because I have the eye for that. So, I don't know the future, but I, I, I think it's not very positive, sorry about that. But I think the positive part of me, because to say something optimistic, <laughs> no, is that we, are go we, can, we will have time to focus on what we love. And for example, I love a lot of things that are physical. So, for example, uh, invest time in make something physical. For example, this event that is going to be maybe in February. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes, it's, um, it's something that it's not just design. It's like to create a community through, uh, the crea uh, through creativity. Mm -hmm. So, creativity is uh, an amazing tool to make 
a lot of things, not just a logotype, you know? So, yes, for me this is exciting, or maybe, I don't know, food design, I don't know, a lot of things that are more physical, maybe, than digital. So is that the kind of, I guess, you know, it's quite a, it's quite a, it's not a particularly rosy picture that you're painting, but I guess if you were <laughs> going to talk to like a, a young designer out there, specifically with this idea of AI in mind, I mean, is that, I guess, what would your advice be to a, a young designer kind of setting out today? Would it be yeah. to create things that are, I guess, more difficult for an AI to produce, which is, yeah, community and physical things? Yeah, of course. Yeah, for the moment. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, I always say, like, um, learn from the past, um, or inspired by the past to imagine the future. It's very important because the pillars of what we are doing now is from the past. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, all the techniques that sometimes we use. I remember there is one technique that is from um, a century uh, before Christ. And yes, and I think it's important to know everything, not just what is going, happening right now. Is that the glass blowing? Yeah, uh, glass that project? Blowing. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know if we've got a picture of it. It might yeah. have come up already, but um, yeah. yeah, you worked with some, some glass blowing, which is a very old technique, yeah, as you say. Um, so there is hope, I guess. Um, yes. I mean, one thing I wanted to ask is, uh, you know, you obviously seem to be very up to date with what's going on and the, the emerging technologies and some of the more disruptive technologies that are out there. Um, how do you kind of keep up to date with them? I mean, uh, how, did you download Mid Journey two years ago and you've been working with it nonstop? It sounds like you kind of really want to get into each of these new technologies as they emerge. I think I love to be informed um, in many ways. So yes, I'm, I read a lot. I think it's very important to read everything. So, but the good news, not the bad news. <laughs> um, but yes, I think it's it's important to be informed and to know everything. I don't know. Of course, when I was studying graphic design, it was all about logo types and stationary design. You know, now there is no stationary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I did my my car in. Maybe, no, something that now it's not possible. But yes, I think you need to evolve. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we're going to move on to some, some audience questions now, some questions that have been submitted by our audience. And yeah, we had some really, really good questions here. Um, we've only probably got time for a few, but um, I think I'll just start with, with Emily's one, which is, what's something you wish you knew or wish you'd done when starting out? So something that you wish you'd kind of known when you were first starting out in 2007 as a, as a designer on your own? Um, yeah. Or something that you wish you'd done back then? Um, maybe, I don't know, that all the paperwork was very stressful, you know, and wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yes, sometimes I didn't receive payments of this kind of things. So yeah, maybe some advice on that. Yeah. Some of the kind of more, yeah, the business focused yes, advice so about. Yes, so invoice 50% in right. advance, this kind of yeah. Uh, tips, yeah, always, yeah. <laughs> don't don't accept <laughs> 365 day payment terms and that kind of, of thing. Of course, if you are working with a big company, I, I'm not going to say the name. It's not possible, but in the others, yes. I mean, we're in the spirit of just dropping absolute clangers today, so feel <laughs> feel free to. Uh... <laughs> um, We'll move on to this question by Joanna. As a woman, how would you say your work is influenced in a woman-led workplace like Hay? Um, so yeah, how does, how does that influence your work? Yeah. Um, I think just like with a podcast and give voice to other people, it's, um, it's enough. I mean, it's just a, to have a reference that, okay, I have a studio, I have employees, um, I have a daughter, everything is possible. I mean, yeah, it's an example at the end. Mm -hmm. um, Joey asks, and there may be a, someone searching for a, for a job here, but what do you look for in new hires? This is something that you... Um, <laughs> maybe not, you know. Um, it's something that you, you mentioned earlier, that you, know, you want someone to have a bit of a kind of idea of, I guess, your aesthetic and yeah. be interested in color and shape and the kind yeah. of things you work that with. Love red? No, it's a yeah. joke. Um, no, I think it's, for me, it's very important, the attitude. I always say 50% is the attitude and the other 50 is the talent. 
So for me, it's not much important if you are the super graphic designer, the best in the world. No, if you don't know how to work with, in a team, you are not part of Hey. So I know it's not easy to find this in an interview, but I try to do the correct um, questions. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I don't have very good luck, but yes, I also I have instinct, a lot of instinct, so uh, I trust my instinct. Um, and finally, a, a question from Ottilie. How did you have the confidence to push through the beginning phase of your studio? You know, that first phase is tough. You're, you're starting out, you obviously mm. don't have someone to lean on when you're kind of striking yeah. out on your own. How did you have the confidence to, to push through that early stage? Um, I think because uh, passion is, is the, the motto here. I mean, motor, the, the tool. Um, the energy I had before, I was young, I was 27. Yeah, I think it's a passion is what m moves everything. Yeah, you have this passion that can, you can work whatever you want and everything, yeah. So maybe more than confidence, it's about, it's about passion that, yeah, that gets I think you through. Yeah, so, passion, yeah. And also like have um, people around you that helps you, it's very, very important. Alone, all by yourself alone, it's very, very difficult. I hope that, hope that helps. There's some, some good advice there for, for Ottilie. Um, well, listen, thank you all so much for those, those questions, everyone who submitted one. Maybe finally, just the last question from me. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've touched on some, some pretty hard-hitting subjects today, but I'm kind of interested to hear what you're excited about working in, uh, or rather on, next year. Um, yeah, kind of mad that we're already getting to the end of, of 2023. But yeah, what are you most excited about for 2024 and, and sinking your teeth into? Yeah. I'm more focused on community. Um, for example, the website that we have designed this year is going to be open source for everybody. And I don't know when the developer answered the emails. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I like, like to, to help and okay, let's, this is something I can share with people. It could be a website, it could be a podcast, it could be, um, whatever, a meal, you know? So this is what um, excites me a lot. And thinking about not just design. Mm -hmm. That's lovely, yeah. I think that's a really lovely sentiment to end on. And um, yeah, let's make community the word for, for 2024. Um, Veronica, it's been absolutely lovely catching up with you. Uh, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this evening. But please, everyone, join me in saying a massive thank you to thank you. Veronica Fuerte. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.